Okay, y'all, I have to get some summer crops up potted before it's too late. We're gonna grow some Malabar spinach first. I'm really interested in this. I've never grown Malabar spinach and it would be nice to have a summer leafy green. Cucumber beetle trying to get at my stuff. Man, crazy. Hey, I've got these Malabar spinach starts and I gotta get them potted up because I'm about to be gone for about a week and well, these can't last a week in these little cells here. So let's go pot these up. Oh, it's so wet back here. Ugh. Malabar spinach is a leafy green that is summer hardy and can grow through the heat of our summers here. And so I'm going to transplant some into this pot. I'm going to put three plants in here. They like to vine. I've never grown it before, but they are a vining plant. And so I'll need to put these somewhere where I can build a trellis system for them to grow up on. But I need to get them in the ground right now. So let's take this one here. There we go. And I'm just going to drop these plugs right into the soil here. I'm going to take this one here and again drop it right in the soil. There's my label. Boy, this is some wet soil. There's a good one in the middle there. I'm going to take this middle one here. If I can get it out, Ugh. pull those wood sorrels out. Oh, come on. Come out of there. There we go, squeeze that cell in the bottom. There's two plants in here. All right. So we're gonna just look at this root system. It doesn't look like it's bound up. These are just about the perfect size for transplanting. And I'm just gonna drop them in here. Press them down. And I don't have to water these because we've had rain and rain and rain. So much rain. These ought to do just fine. All right, this is just a regular potting soil fresh potting soil from the store. I'm sitting in a bag, smells pretty ripe because it's been wet. It's got rained on. And uh, we're just gonna let these grow up like that. All right, I gotta find a place for the rest of them. Other summer crops I've got going are some sweet potato starts. What I did here was I took my small tubers from last year's crop. I stored them in the winter in my garage and I just buried them in some potting soil and all these wonderful slips have come up. But I have a problem here. I have a rodent who has discovered these sweet potatoes down here and has begun getting in here and digging and begun eating these sweet potatoes. You can see that. But the slips are fine. All you want is the slip with roots on it like that. So we'll break that off the potato and this is ready to plant. This is a good sweet potato slip. Let's grab a few more here. You just want to break them off of the break them off of the potato with some roots like that, and that's all you need to do to start sweet potatoes. So I'm going to pull a few of these out of here before the rodent really gets everything killed off and destroys my plants here. And you want to bring up a slip that has roots on it like that. So I'm going to get a few of these to put in a container. See, the rodent already cut that one off. That's a loss. Here's some good ones here. Look at this. Let's see, let's weed that out. Yeah, all of these should make sweet potato plants. There we go. Let's go plant some of these. I have this container, and actually some of these sweet potatoes actually grew in this container. It's got year old potting soil in it, so I'll, I'll wanna come back and fertilize. But uh, I'm just going to loosen up the surface here, and I'm going to put some of my slips in here, just a couple of them, maybe three. Yeah, three slips in this one ought to do fine. And I've got another container I can put sweet potato slips in. Just bury those roots, water them in really well, and they should take off just fine. We'll come back and look at these next week. I'll be away for a bit, but... 
there will be people here in my house who will shoot you. I've got caretakers, my son, my other son. Yeah, they'll be here taking care of Phoebe. But I will be away for a little while, so we won't be able to look at these videos until next week. All right, there's three sweet potato plants in here. That's a little crowded, but I think we'll get some potatoes out of it, and at least we'll have something growing in the summer. I have yet another container here. Whatever was in here before, I think it was squash. Yeah, there was some squash in here, I think. It's long gone. Nice fertile soil here. Again, we'll continue to fertilize these plants. I'm going to put a couple of slips in here as well. Just like so. You can grow sweet potatoes in containers. I've done it and been successful, though you will be more successful if you grow them in the uh, in the ground. Okay, look at this. Here's a good example of how to do transplants. Look, that's a little root system. This is an enormous system of foliage. I'm going to pinch off some of this foliage so that root system doesn't have to work. Just keep all those leaves alive. I'm going to balance it out. So we're going to put these down in here. Get on down in there. All right, and hopefully, in the end of the summer, we'll have some sweet potatoes. That's real nice. These varieties are the ones I grew last year, so this has been a no, uh, no money sweet potato project this year. I have this big bin. I grew sweet potatoes uh, in this bin last year. Currently I have a tomato plant growing up in here which is not going to make it to fruiting because the heat will uh, kill this plant and stop pollination before this plant comes to uh, maturity. So I'm going to take this plant out just like that and now we have space to put some more sweet potatoes in which will fill this entire container and by the time these onions are harvested and done and the heat kills them off, this whole thing will be able to fill up with sweet potatoes. Let me go get some more slips. All right, I'm going to put three plants in here. That one has a little bit of a, not many roots, so I'm going to again pinch off some of the foliage so that those roots can support the foliage. And I'm going to put that one right down in there. There we go. Got one here with a nice little root system, but still, it's a little much. So pluck off some of the foliage. I'm going to put this right in the middle. There we go. And then one more for good measure. Leave that one right there. I'm going to put it over here. And pluck off about half that foliage. And I'll come and harvest these onions, and that will allow these sweet potatoes to kind of fill up this area. In fact, I'm going to put one right here in the middle of my onions. I have another pot of questionable potting mix. This uh, had a fig tree in it. The fig tree died. There's lots of roots and organic material down in there. Lots of earthworms. So, yeah, if there's earthworms in it, there's got to be earthworm castings. So, I'm going to put some Malabar spinach in here too. Just to get it going, these plugs are a little bit wet because it's been raining for so long. There we go. That's a good one. We'll put that one in. We'll put that one in. I don't know where that came from. I was shaking it out. All right, well, we'll put these two in here. Just like so. this one here. Just put two in this pot and see what happens. I suspect these will vine up pretty crazy, but I've never grown it so I don't know. So I've got my one pot with three plants in it and this pot with two plants. We're just going to see what happens. But this is summer gardening and I'm beginning in May, at the end of May here. And uh, yeah, got a plan ahead. Okay, so now we've planted some Malabar spinach and some sweet potatoes. Now, 
Malabar spinach will thrive in tropical weather. It is native to Southeast Asia and to lower India. And uh, yeah, it'll grow here through the summer and it will vine like crazy. And you can treat it as a perennial, but I'm not gonna put any of that Malabar spinach in the garden bed itself because I don't want it taken over the garden bed. Uh, but I, I've got it in containers to keep it contained. So we could come and harvest throughout the summer and have some good greens um, throughout the growing season. Uh, those sweet potatoes, they'll also vine out a lot and uh, you can let them sprawl or you can train them up a trellis. And uh, every bit of that plant is edible as well, but it's the tubers I'm after. And we hope that uh, they'll grow enough tubers down in, that, uh, in those pots. And uh, I might put some in the garden as well. Uh, we'll just have to see what the, what the late spring summer transition uh, brings to us. So yeah, the summer transition, um, spring is, uh, and summer transition is a kind of a, a gray area in my zone 9A on the Texas coast. Some of these tomato plants will grow into June or July before they start giving up and stop pollinating. But uh, uh, yeah, these beans and the cucumbers will be out of here um, probably mid-June. I get a few more harvests off of them and the heat will, will get too much and the powdery mildew will move in on the cucumbers and yeah, we'll have an opportunity then to repurpose this bed for summer crops like long beans, cow peas, uh, sweet potatoes, whatever we want to put in there. So summer is kind of my, my slow season. I put things out here that grow during the heat and I stay inside most of the day. So it gets a little ragged, get a little hairy, a little weedy during the summer. But after the summer garden, we'll come in and just before October, we'll come and uh, scorched earth policy. You take everything out, flame weed, get the garden looking nice again, ready for fall gardening. And then we'll compost and start our fall and winter garden. It's my favorite time of the year. Man, these mockingbirds are going out of their mind. Thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Hope your garden's doing well. Hey, if you like our videos, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. We really have a good thriving community down in the comment section. Follow us on Instagram and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.